uh, you know, we can maybe say, well, what, what, what did an artist do in the beginning of the 19th century? What was an artist's job? Well, they were in still, the beginning of the 19th century. They were still century. selling their work. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they're but what, they sold their work, but that's how they supported themselves. But what, what did they do? They woke up in the morning, uh, they're, you know, a painter, they, they feel they need to be a painter, they get the training to be a painter, then what do they do? I mean, they just sit in a studio and paint, they have to go and work uh, as an apprentice to a, a master artist. I mean, how do they go about living it? And what is their life like at this point? And when does that all begin to change? Because I think we recognize that to be an artist in the 1820s is very different than being an artist in the year 2012. The, the range of responsibilities and freedoms and, and, and the technological universe that you're engaged in has changed everything. Hasn't well, it? When the medium, yes, when, the medium when, when, when it, it shifted from being a medium to being an artist, when the medium became the person, became the artist themselves. I mean, you're, I mean modern they, painters is a perfect example. Yes. Modern right. painters is not about modern painters, it's yeah. about right. what it is an artist is supposed to do in right. yeah. postmodern times. Yeah, modern painters. What is a modern painter? A modern painter uses a cell phone, a modern painter uses a you know uses a uses a computer. I mean the, you know it's it's paintbrush is is anything, right? Yeah. I mean but really it, you know, a modern painter's paintbrush is themselves. Why is it that every artist today feels the, the need to, to, to be a performance artist too? Well, oh, virtually. I mean, you know, um, I mean, you know, if you look at the, the makeup of Performa, which is a performance biennial that, take, uh, that occurs in New York every other year, um, most of those people are not performance artists. They are they are just artists who, who, who tend to work in all sorts of areas and and and, and now want to to do performance too. Uh, you know, the, the, but there's also a sense of the artist continuously performing. Boom. Well, that's my point. Yes, yeah, yes, the, yes. the medium is yes. the artist themselves, yes. right? So, so when did this shift take a, take place? When the performative became the norm, became central to the identity of of what it is you think you need to do as an artist. So, you were about to say something. Uh, it's actually not that new. It just has changed. And uh, the amazing thing when you study the history of ideas is that humans really only have about six or seven of them that keep on changing. <laughs> um, and we also have amnesia about the fact that we are constantly. Uh, having the same questions. It's interesting, a philosopher whose name I won't mention said <coughs> that the point of a question is that it can't be answered. That's why you keep on asking it. Um, it was a Nazi. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it starts with an H. But uh, for example, I mean, famously, the, the beginning of the Renaissance, Brunelleschi, who's uh, even the concept of artist as we have it now does not exist then. He was a, an architect who also did engineering and he also did mathematics and he also did painting. But he famously broke from the guild system and, and asserted his autonomy from a union system. And what I would say now that relates both what Susan is saying is this idea of autonomy. There is so much external pressure on you, whether it's the price of your rent, whether it's your support network or your media or whatever, and it's your responsibility to shape and form your own space within that because if you don't, people will do it for you. So the rise of the autonomous artist, uh, you, you, you say is, the, is central to the rede redefinition of what the job of being an artist is. And to what do you tie the rise of the autonomous artist, any of you? What, 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 what events, what, what signal uh, shifts in world history do you tie the rise of this autonomy to? Uh, I think it's, it's a uh, subject that's formed in society in general, and you have the rise of autonomous actors in business, you have the rise of autonomous actors in literature, it's not something unique to art. Art has its own manifestation of it, and a lot of that has to do, at least in the West, uh, as a process of the ending of the feudal system and the beginning of certain ideas like enlightenment and long-term <coughs> But doesn't the academy just take the place of all those other feudal structures, and the academy that all of you have just finally gotten free of? that still functions in the way that the guild functioned, the way that any of those restrictive organizations function in many cultures, unless you had academic training and are part of the academic structure, sure. you don't, you're not recognized as being a real artist if you don't have a, a degree in art. It's sort of like yeah. in The Wizard of Oz, you know, at the end of the movie. I mean, there's always <laughs> been a lot of overlapping institutions that, 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 have, that have, you know, affected artists' lives, and, and, and there are today. Those, those institutions have slightly changed or have different names. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what artists want to ask questions? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is the elephant in the room right now? 
money. Elephant. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> money. Without money, the connection. But money is, money. Yeah. Huh? money is a new in the art world. Yeah. Money was important to every artist who's ever existed. So how is it to do if this is the elephant in the room? The, the thing that is like... It's more all pervasive. The influence how many of you who are artists here are concerned about money? Hands. Are concerned about where you're going to buy your money? <laughs> <laughs> who might buy your work? How you're going to pay your rent? I see they're not concerned, none of them. They're all from very wealthy families. No issues. Oh, very important. They are no artists here. What is that? And they are not concerned, they are not artists according to them. That's, I guess. No, we didn't say that. No, not at all. We're just saying this is the reality. So that's the second question. Is that okay? What? Not to be concerned. Is it okay not to be concerned about money? Or to be concerned about money. I, I think, you know, I, personally I think that money, uh, you know, can get in the way, uh, like any other number of critical drives, you know. It's a matter of keeping things in proportion, because you of course need money, just like you need to eat, well, just like you know, need a uh, roof over your head. One of the things that really has changed is that, is that the market has become glorified more recently. Yeah. The market itself has become glorified. But or, artists have always needed money and needed to work, you know, needed to make money. But, but with with you know with a guy named Andy Warhol, suddenly the, 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 you know the, the money itself became became essential. And when when the, the art market really globalized in the mid '90s, say, um, it, it just I don't know. Why why Andy Warhol? But that has to be connected because before that we had Bugaro and Renoir. Rembrandt, they were all very rich. No, no, but they didn't glorify money. I mean, they, no, they, more, more importantly, Warhol created a big enough and diverse enough portfolio where various speculators could use that as a cash to uh, raise value on. That's very much to do with the, the, the actual... The the, the, well, even more so, how you hoard and how you manipulate the demand but in relationship to an auction. Well, this is another, yeah, this is another topic. That, this, is, yeah. now, this is another topic that we can, yeah. that we can get into, and that is, uh, is the art world the art market, a corrupt sewer of, 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 of uh, conflict and interest, or is it in fact an open space in which uh, ideas are actually in contest and the best ideas rise to the top, or someplace in between? It's probably someplace in between. It's probably someplace in between. I mean, there's, speaking of India, uh, and Yes, that's, the Indian art market has been a very interesting one to watch. In the specific local context, between, roughly between the years 2002 and 2008, the price of Indian art went up 400% in real terms. And the moderns over started overproducing at a remarkable rate. And the quality of work went, went there was a, a remarkable decline, if you like, in the quality of work overall. And this, this can be put down to the fact that there was that there was such a great demand for work that people were just overproducing and producing not very good work. Um, so, so in, in, in the case of India, it's been more of a sewer than an open space. And then came the great crash of September 2008, which was, in my opinion, a boom for, um, for, for the art world. Because it just meant that people were not commanding the sorts of prices that they had been through 2006 and 2007. And then they actually had the time to get down to producing some quality and serious work. Well, I think the same could be said about the Chinese, the evolution the Chinese, of the Chinese yeah, market Chinese during that same period. And uh, maybe but, a little earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, the kind of cleansing wind yes. uh, that you know that is a bust is actually a great thing uh, in, the, in the end of the day because it does mean that the artists who are <coughs> producing work that's serious and not just commodities for a for, for an overheated yes. market. Uh, have have something more to say. Dan, what do you about to? I mean, what happens if, because there, there's a lot of lights on the market, we suddenly start talking about uh, only a small segment, really, of of, of the art world or the, of, of artists who are who are very much a part of the market and very much with, you know and, and, and very much feed off of the market. But there is also, and, 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 and perhaps there's a little more sewer going on there, but it, there is a much broader art world and, and, a, and a much broader context for artists making work that is, it, you know, that, 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 that of course is affected by the market and of course has some, some relation to it, but, but also exists 
largely, you know, with, with other concerns at, 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 at its forefront, at, at the forefront of the people's minds. So, do you think there were not collector cabals before the age of Warhol speculation? And do you think this is purely a, a, a function of I, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's changed. I, I mean, it started off the Second World War and, and, and then gradually transformed into, into what <laughs> Well, I, well, I, I, going back to the sewer thing, I mean, I think it's a little bit like politics. I mean, you know, there's, there, I mean, again, you know, the, 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 is politics a sewer? Sure, but are there people yeah. doing actually good work in politics? Yes. I yes. Mean, you know, the, 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 you know, the, that there are bad actors or, or or people with conflicts of interest does not does not completely uh, uh, um, uh, stain the entire system. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it, but it does mean that the system can be gained. Oh sure. Oh yeah. And, and there's a bit more gaming going on, probably. <laughs> so this is a bit more one of the problems in India has also been the absence of alternative spaces. Well, also, it, well, I mean, I, you know, I'm not one to speak because I don't have fully the overview. But from the Indian museums I've seen, I'd say one of the problems in India is the absence of, of serious space, yes. art, proper art museums mm -hmm. with proper curatorial principles and and a, and a proper set of uh, standards uh, to support the the continued growth of it of the indigenous Indian contemporary scene and the and the and the merger of the the global scene with the Indian scene. Because, for instance, in India, it's very hard to see work from European and and, and American artists. It's very hard to see a, a really serious overview of contemporary Indian art in Indian public art museums. So that's part of the shame of contemporary India, a nation of this of this scale and this much wealth and this much intelligence, to not have a great system of contemporary and modern museums across the country in communication with museums around the world is, an, is a shame. It's something that India should put right in time. But I, don't, I haven't seen it happening in the, in the 20 years I've been visiting India. I, I see the need for, in fact, independent activities like Art Next. But right now, in the, uh, foundations like Art Next are necessary because there are not public institutions who are committed to the vision and to taking the risks on behalf of the artists of their time. Uh, you know, is that true in China too? Yes. Uh, I'd say, Different you know, one, in, in Europe and the United States, that's less true. I mean, there are independent public institutions that take their responsibility more seriously, however critically they may be assessed. Uh, but, you know, uh, for instance, you're working with Documenta, and I'm sure it's giving you a chance to look at the history of Documenta. And, and the role that that's played in, in Europe. Could you imagine a, a situation in Asia uh, or in South Asia uh, where something like a documentary could, could play a role? Yeah, I mean, I, I do believe very much though in context and, and uh, situatedness. So yes, but you know, documentary itself has to be very strongly situated within its time. Uh, which was 1955. So post-war German reconstruction of its image. And, and yeah, and, and specifically, and not to say that this is analogous, but specifically that art and image was specifically attacked by the Nazi regime, and new iconography was made. So it hits to the heart of the, that actual trauma itself, uh, which I'm sure happens everywhere else. Uh, but, you know, you, I wouldn't make a clear analogy to that. I think it has to do with an over-determination of various factors that leads to it. So it's not it's not a model that can be replicated. Yeah, Documenta is part of a, 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 a number of uh, democratic uh, uh, yeah, initiatives okay. worldwide to sort of spread, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the spread of institutions like Documenta, the, the various biennales and, <clears throat> and global festi art festivals uh, around the world has taken off like, yeah. you know, uh, like a field of mushrooms on a damp morning. Yeah. 